good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. In our world, there, there's a lot of work. We are still at war with one another in Ukraine. Uh, there are uh, pandemic issues and there are other illnesses uh, about. There are those who are the effect of natural disasters. You all are aware of uh, and probably have a list of global issues for which to pray. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so grateful to be able to gather to worship you and collectively to call our attention uh, to you. We ask that you would hear us as we have a private prayer of thanksgiving, lifting to you those places we are so grateful that you are providing for us and paving the way ahead for us. Let us pray. Hear us as we lift to you the prayer of Jesus. 
say our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. It is time for our children's message, and we have such a treat in store. Dr. Ben Taylor has uh, checked the box and said he's willing to do a children's message every now and then. So we invite him to come on up. Catherine, please come as well. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Catherine, it's just you and me on stage today. Have a seat right over here on this Sunday morning, you and the shepherd, all the rest of the 99 other sheep have gone up to the pasture. All of these are your brothers and cousins, because you're in the same flock. You're jumping around, playing hide and seek, whatever lambs play all day long, and you're really tired. So, what are you going to do? You're going to crawl over there under the tree in that tall grass. You maybe ate too much grass through the day. And you're really tired. And you fall asleep. I've never done that after supper. Yeah. But in a little while, you wake up. And it's really dark. Where the moon is not out. You can see all the stars. You can see the Big Dipper, the Milky Way, and no other sheep or around. What are you going to do? Mommy told you that if you get scared out there in the wood, there might be some wolves around who like to eat little baby sheep. So you don't holler out, about to try it. But you just sit and have to sit and you look around. And you weren't paying any attention when you went out there, just like you went to the museum where you were. So you don't know if you went home. You don't have a cell phone, no way to call for help. But back, we know, back at the ranch, as they said, the shepherd is taking checks. The 99 sheep when they left, I mean 100 sheep when they left, and 99 came home. Where's that last little sheep? So, the assessment shop. That sheep must be it. Went to sleep up there on the field. So I've got to go get them. Now, you're still the little sheep. So, here you are. It's dark. I have to be quiet so the wolf can hear you. Here, trap, trap, trap. Coming up here with some of that shepherd. And he or she might be a girl shepherd, I don't know. Finds you. And the Bible says, picks that little sheep up, puts him on the shoulders, and carries him home. Now you know what it's like to be thinking to some that found you in the museum. And you know someone helped you when you broke your arm. Broke mine too. And we're always thoughtful. We're always walking back home. Always thankful for those who found us. And I was thinking today, since this is 9 11 day, that there were many, many small sheep up in those towers. Some shepherds disguised as firemen came. We have a little prayer. And we'll say my prayer. It says, God, thanks for loving me. Say that. Help me love everyone else. Including myself. Amen. Thank you, Mary. That's all. Amen. Thank you, she was good. She'll let you borrow those shoes if you like. Am I all done? Yes, I gave you five minutes, but, you know. 
Let us continue our worship. Thank you, Dr. Ben. Continue our worship as we bring our God's tithes and our offerings. Loving God, we are grateful for every gift you give to us, and we return a portion that it might be multiplied for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
our scripture today, as you've heard, is about the loss. The lost chapter is chapter 15 of Luke, beginning with the first two through the tenth verses today. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisee to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents and over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The parables of Jesus for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is 9-11, Sunday, September 11th. It has been 21 years now since the Twin Towers fell, and for many, a sense of security was lost. We had friends, or maybe we were those, who lost sleep and lost trust in the security America had enjoyed up until that time. Like the day Kennedy was shot, if you're close to my age or over, or the day the Challenger blew up, and now the day the world was shut down because of a new coronavirus, we remember where we were when we heard that news. We remember hearing that the first tower had been hit, and then when the second one was hit, that second tower was a confirmation that the towers had been hit intentionally. We lost what had been that day. Security was imposed at airports that we still endure and count on, dutifully taking off our shoes and stepping into the scanner like every other traveler also does. Perceptions of safety and security were changed forever that day. In the world Jesus lived out his life, perceptions of safety and security were also thoroughly established. There were rules of conduct for the Jewish faithful. The parables for today were told because Jesus was under attack from the Pharisees and the chief priests. They objected to Jesus' teaching on this, these grounds. One, he is a friend of tax collectors and sinners. He receives the ungodly and he eats with them. Second, he's a blasphemer. He talks about God as being his father and thinks he is equal to God. Third, he is a lawbreaker. He heals disease on the Sabbath and in other ways ignores the sacred law of Israel. He is in league with the devils. He works wonders and does seeming miracles by the power and the prince of the devils. These parables, the lost sheep and the lost coin, are told in the atmosphere of these accusations. We can imagine Jesus has told these same stories many times, but this time, in the context of the accusations. Jesus reminds those folks that they have been taught by the prophets from, from Samuel to John that we should seek for God. We are to search for truth. This teaching to seek for the Lord that he, while he may be found is to be taken to heart by the faithful. Jesus confirms. But there is more. Jesus is also confirming something brand new to their thinking. He says, I have come to show you that while you are seeking to find God, as Dr. Ben lifted up, God is 
is seeking to find you. You've been taught that divine acceptance comes after your repentance and as a result of all your works of sacrifice and penitence. But I say to you that the Father accepts you even before you have repented. The Father sends the Son and his disciples to find you and bring you with rejoicing back into the fold. That fold, that pen the sheep stay in, the fold, spiritual fold, is the kingdom of God, the path of spiritual progress. Jesus said, you are all the sheep which have gone astray, and I have come to seek and to save those who are lost. So what we can hear in that is that no matter where we are in our spiritual journey, our spiritual lives, we are being sought out by God. As followers of Jesus, we are wanting to see the world through the eyes of love and forgiveness. Maybe forgiving ourselves for the wrong definitions we've held. Willing to see our wrong definitions for the sake of seeing the world as the divine has created it. And not as we have defined it, apart from God. Do you remember those pictures called magic eye pictures or hidden 3D pictures? They look like this. Remember these? In order to see the picture beneath the picture, one has to unfocus one's eyes to look beyond the surface, which just looks like a jumble of chaos, and see into the picture. A sharp 3D image. This picture is of a majestic elephant. When you look at it long enough and look beyond this surface, look beyond all that you can see until you look deeper. I'm told that to see the kingdom of God right where we are, we need only take our focus off the apparent surface that we are seeing. <clears throat> We believe that what we see is real, because it certainly looks real. It looks like some giraffes and maybe some other animals jumbled into that. It looks real, but it is a veil of chaos covering the most clear and undeniable reality once you look past the surface and look beneath. The peace of God is here. We only have to commit ourselves to seeing it. We look beyond our definitions of the surface reality. Yes, we can see this world. It's a jumble of chaos. And we get lost in that. Or maybe we try to pretty up one little corner of that picture. And there is more. And it is the more that Jesus came to show us. It doesn't matter if we make the surface picture look better. It's the focusing beyond that picture that brings us back into the fold. There's a rich and a fearless, abundant world in which to live our lives, right in the kingdom of God that is in the midst of the surface chaos that we see. It is still this world we are in, but with a new and deeper way of seeing. Our connection to the kingdom can be found in this world we are living in. We cannot find it on our own, but only as the Holy Spirit guides us to unfocus on what we're seeing and to look beyond it. So in reality, then, it's not really a journey that we earn every step of. In reality, our seeking God is about letting go of this world we're focusing on and in an instant releasing our private focus to join in the Spirit and see deeper to the altar of God, the kingdom of love and light, it can only, it's only a shift of our perception where we are looking. That is the shift of perception that Jesus came to show us. All are worthy of the kingdom of God. There is rejoicing when we make the slightest change in our thinking. Think of that. Rejoicing in heaven. Sometimes I've heard them when I've been particularly 
stubborn about something. Rejoicing in heaven when our judgmental thinking or blame or whatever we have taken on that alienates us from each other and from God. So our prayer is show us the truth here. Show us the truth here. This cannot be what you meant by abundant life. Dear God, help me to see beyond the surface of my chaos that I'm seeing into the reality that is your creation right here and right now. There is a crowd of heaven waiting to rejoice when we get it, even a little piece of it. When we are willing to commit to seeing more deeply than we have ever seen before. When we are willing to focus only on God's will so that it becomes our will. We're like, oh, look at that picture beyond what I was seeing. As followers of Jesus, we are to follow that command, not only to go into the fold, but also to invite others. To come and join us there. To share the good news of the kingdom of God. It's not about the service. There's something more. Making followers of Jesus, which will transform this world in the way we're seeing it. In our Bible study, our topic this week was witnessing. We have promised as United Methodists to support this congregation of the United Methodist Church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. The authors of our series, called A Disciple's Path, shared what it means to give invitational witness. Wherever we are on the path home, a part of our calling is to invite others to join us in our commitment to our relationship with one another and with God. Here's what invitational evangelism entails, so much more comfortable than the idea of doing our good to somebody, whether they ask us to or not. Invitational evangelism begins with friendship. No one wants to be manipulated. Witness is centered in Christ-like love for others and it begins in honest, non-manipulative, life-giving human friendship. The challenge for many ch church folks is that, uh, this used to be more true than it is now, is that most of our friends are already followers of Christ. How many friends do we have with people who do not yet know Christ? Second, listen, listen, listen. It's easy to... Uh, to be, be in the, with the assumption, to begin with the assumption that it's about our talking to people about Christ. But Jesus' relationship with Andrew began with a question. What are you looking for? He was calling this man to follow him. What are you looking for, he asked. In his conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus listens deeply to the thirst in her soul. Are we more interested in listening to another person's story than in sharing our own? Third, know your story. The role of witnesses, I love this, the role of a witness is not to argue the case, that's the lawyer's job, not to judge the outcome, there is a judge in the courtroom, but simply to tell what they heard, what they saw, what they experienced. <clears throat> Whenever the opportunity came, the apostles were ready to tell the story of the way they met Christ and the difference he had made in their lives. Can you tell the story of your relationship with Christ in simple, clear, and concise, in a concise way? The next thing is to offer the invitation, the invitation to come and see, can take whatever form is appropriate to the situation. Come to Evan United Methodist Church. It's at 1115. 1115. It may be a direct invitation to visit a church, join a small group, or just to come by the yard sale on Harvest Day to participate in some kind of form or a ministry or mission. It is always an open-ended invitation. 
that begins a journey toward a Christ-centered life. There is a conflict on Harvest Day with a ministries gathering. All the district pastors are meeting with the bishop on the 24th at Spartanburg Methodist College. I've been asked to lift up uh, both the ministries, the unique ministries from Inman United Methodist Church and from Aldersgate, but from Inman, what we are doing is partnering with Epworth in the care of a new foster mother. The two Sunday school classes are taking one week at a time. But also, we provide space in this facility for help and wholeness in the form of Zumba and in the form of line dance and in the form of NA, which meets here twice a week. Those are gifts to this community of ministry, and I am to lift them up the same day you are selling at the art sale. I'm to lift those ministries up to our district to show what you all are doing in your community. Invitational evangelism. Trust the Spirit. Because we believe, United Methodist, in prevenient grace. We believe that the love of God is already at work in people's lives before they're even aware of it. They may be more ready than you realize. We can trust the Spirit to prepare the way, to be at work in the relationship, to open the right conversation at the right time, and to give us the right way to respond. In summary, we can trust our God to be at work in every situation. All humans are God's creatures and are part of the kingdom that we are wanting to see clearly what we humans have created apart from God, that is only this surface jumble of chaos. And once we see the kingdom clearly, that jumble just disappears. Isn't that good news? Let's share that good news. And let's seek to look beyond the jumble to what God would have us see. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so grateful. Grateful that there is more than what we are seeing on the surface. Give us the eyes to see. Open our eyes that we may see. Visions of truth you have ready to show us. May we be those who are seeking to find uh, that fold in which we can see through your eyes. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will get your bulletins, please. I wonder where mine is. And turn to the statement of faith. Thank you, Gail. I think it's in the car law. Uh, let us say together what we believe. We believe in God who has created and is created, who works in others and us through the Spirit. We follow in the way of Jesus, celebrating God's presence, living with respect in creation, loving and serving others, seeking justice and resisting injustice, and seeking out hope and peace. We believe every person, regardless of color, religion, creed, age, class, or orientation, is a child of God. We are connected because we are family. We gather because we all have something to share. We encourage one another and hold each other accountable. But most of all, we love one another. Thanks be to God.
remembering the chaos of 9-11 and other things in our lives, but knowing there's more. May we commit ourselves to seeing the more that God has in mind for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.